premise for us for today is that television is a remarkably resilient um, consumer behavior. And that right now, it's at the epicenter of a tremendous amount of innovation. By the end of this year, we will have 9.9 .9 million connected televisions in the United States. Television has always been social, connected, and portable. It's just now going to be 10, 100x more social, connected, and portable. Yes, recently, you've yeah. talked to a lot of people in the industry. What, what do you look at and say that that is something that's really going to uh, be a game changer? I really, really am watching the tablet to TV interaction. Those broadcasts that had the sync to the, the social element did grow more than those that didn't. So I know that people are talking about the show. <laughs> Uh, and the content that we generate when it's happening. Um, can I make a, a straight line between that and whether or not we see huge ratings increases? Probably not. Is it time to revolutionize how we measure TV show success? I don't think we're moving away from Nielsen anytime soon. The number of viewers is just not, uh, is not the only important metric any longer. I do think we need to take into consideration the back channel conversations um, and integrate those into the content that's being produced. Before you do all of this stuff, what matters most is the actual content experience. What are you producing? Even if you're watching television and you're, uh, you're not actually contributing to the, the social discussion, you may be part of it by being a consumer of that content. There's you know, a small percentage of people who actually tweet. There's a larger percentage of people who actually read those tweets. Not everybody is going to want to completely be interactive and lean forward all the time. And some people won't at all. As a marketer, do you want 10 million viewers sitting back casually observing, or do you want 5 million who are freaking crazy engaged? If someone is super engaged with programming, that might be the wrong place to put your, your brand. But I think the next evolution is going to be uh, to try to find out who has the most influence. Be wary of how you define influence. I actually think he is a great example to any client who's thinking about social in their business. Hey everyone at the Hill Holidays TV Next Summit, it's Jimmy Fallon. Hope you're having a good time learning about social media. Well, we just saw a great video from Jimmy Fallon, and he's obviously seeing huge success with social media. What are you doing with other shows? So I do know that there are certain shows that are sort of willing to embrace it more. Um, you know, Jimmy happens to be a great example of someone who just really understands it's right for his audience, it's right for that type of show. has sort of been at the forefront and very vocal about um, standardization and measurement. There will be an identifiable tag code on the content from the second it goes out anywhere and that code lives as that content goes across platforms. How should we be thinking about Philo as, uh, as a marketing opportunity? You know, we have ways of knowing who's watching programming, when they're watching it, who they are, uh, and a way to reach those people. TV used to be something a lot of people would be embarrassed to, to say they were doing, and now there's kind of a, a pride and a participation. Yeah, we've actually had people ask us, like, well, what happens if you don't want somebody to know what you're watching? It's really, really easy to solve that problem. Just don't share it. <laughs> Here's Morgan. You were telling me a little bit about his attitude towards uh, Twitter and how it might have changed a little bit in the last six months or so. We are a one hour show um, five times a week, but um, we have to live in the digital space and in the social media space for the, the other 23 hours. What guidance and advice would you have for, for brand marketers uh, as they think about um, social and television? We got to get beyond um, just the idea that you've aggregated large crowds in those places. Twitter is a triumph of humanity, not of technology. And when it comes to the future of TV, it is all about humanity.
we've set up this crazy uh, connected TV demo area over here where we have all of the connected TV devices that we'll be talking about in our next segment, which is called TV Gets Connected. There's a lot of marketers that are looking at this space and kind of sitting back waiting to see who's going to be the dominant emerging player. That probably isn't going to happen anytime soon. Consumers are becoming much more educated on what not just a DVR can do, but what an additional box can do that's connected to the internet. You want to remove the, the technology and the fear of the technology that some people have and make it very, very simple. YouTube and Hulu have been around since 2007. We're now four years later, and you can't get a good cross-platform view of how content and how advertising is doing. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's ridiculous at this point. Here you've got the technology that invented ad skipping, and now we're here saying we're the, the hero trying to solve the problem. Looking at OTT as a space for advertisers is compelling in that the ability to skip those ads just it doesn't exist today. There are, you know, a hundred examples of sort of advertising as content that we think um, are very exciting. We will actually be able to engage with a brand using motion, uh, gesture, voice recognition, etc. We see not necessarily a big trend in cord cutting, although there is some of that going on, but more so cord never getting. The data would suggest that folks are not really that interested in, in cutting their cable. We're seeing a segment of our installed base actually cutting the cord, and so they're removing their cable box. This is the way they consume media now, and that percentage is growing. But the real key here, we believe, is TV should still be easy to watch. And when you sit down, it's just supposed to be simple and enjoyable. As these sites and devices emerged, uh, to provide that other way, of course, the revolutionary cry of cord cutting um, emerged. We wanted to know, though, if this was really true. I feel really good about Comcast. <laughs> I think we'd be happy with just going back to our regular cable. It meets most of our needs. You'll have plenty of time to give your counter perspectives on, on what you just saw, um, starting now. Video, what's your reaction to, to uh, both the before we install those devices and, and the reaction after a week with them? We're painfully aware that when we look at how users are, are watching TV, there are things that an OTT device can't do today. Have you guys seen any insights into the types of content that people are watching or, or the behaviors around watching that content? A large piece of it is primetime television and shows, so it would be from Hulu Plus or Amazon or Netflix. Network websites mm -hmm. are currently blocking content. If I can go on my um, laptop right now and access that same content, why why are they blocking the content? Ultimately, the, the, the business models will prove out, but it's still early days, and I think they're just trying to figure it out right now. There's been press that says most TVs will be interconnected, will be connected TVs within the next two years. Mm -hmm. um, any prediction on your market share? Within the next couple of years, especially as people cycle out of the, the last TV that they purchased, for example, um, it, it really is not going to make a lot of sense to not buy a connected TV. Your Netflix partnership is happening eminently, but still late. The box itself was a little bit late in, in getting delivered. Is, is speed to market hurting you, and, and what are you guys doing about it? It's time for us to transition from being uh, you know, a startup that started with five people right. into a real company that's now got partnerships with Walmart and CBS. Well, what's Boxy doing to reach out to more of the mainstream audience? One of the big things that's holding us back from prime time is prime time. So all of the major content providers that are holding back their content. So who's the question for this panel? Can, can I yeah. throw something in oh, first? Uh, I just have to give a big round of applause to Hill Holiday. This is probably yeah. one of the best run conferences. Yeah. Well <laughs> Our 
consumers love to time shift content. Uh, I don't think it comes at the expense of uh, much live TV. Both kind of pools are growing. So Nielsen tells us that someone who is a top fan of a show only watches about half of the episode's life. And most of our streams come from primetime network television programs that are current. Yes, on demand, the consumption is increasing. Yes, there's a lot of growth, but live TV is here to stay. And behaviors take years and years to change, but technology can be made to fit the behavior. In order to make sure that you maximize your brand halo effect, you have to think and coordinate all of your media planning and buying across all those devices. If you're just buying 30 second spots on television right now, or even 30 second spots on television that happens to be viewed on the web, you're missing out. Make the advertising as relevant as possible. Even if I whittle down to a woman on any given device, it might not be the product that she's interested in. So we want to make it easy for them to consume the content wherever they want to consume it. And from an advertising perspective, we want to deliver those impressions to you wherever they are. There needs to be a entity of some sort that provides distribution and technology ad sales, but it doesn't necessarily have to look like a traditional television network. We're still about accumulating a large audience that's very efficient for advertisers, that's valuable to yes. them, that's rich in the targets that, that they're looking for. Based on our user studies, we think there's still some content, big content networks that are still going to be front and center, and that's going to drive the sales of our subscription service. Your big, bad, monolithic cable company is just as excited about the multi-platform world as you are. <laughs>content deals and the partnerships are being forged and dissolved almost monthly. So what they can find somewhere today, they might not be able to find it in a couple of weeks. What are you seeing different in the audiences on the portable devices than what you're seeing in TV? 65% of the people who we ask, you know, why did you watch this online? Because I missed it on air and I want to catch up. And the iPad is a great patch up experience. The availability of programming on portable devices hurt the resale of programming to other distribution outlets. So now they're getting three ratings and you know 10 shares and a little extra viewing on all these other ancillary platforms and suddenly they're overexposed. It just doesn't make sense to me. you talk about the fact that your average show is longer than most clips and yep. what that means for us? A completely new form of video entertainment is emerging in real time right now. And it's getting longer. And it's getting longer because people are willing to watch longer. Now what's maybe the one thing that you're most excited about? We're actually building a destination site and starting to talk about the Blip brand. And we're incredibly excited about building that site and allowing people to come in and become fans of these shows and interact with them and tweet with them. Is there anything right now that uh, consumers uh, aren't getting that you see Fios being able to provide that is that one step above beyond everybody else? When I go to my traditional video on demand, you just kind of play a movie, uh, but you really have no way to kind of choose from particular chapters, more like a DVD menu. That's more like, I would say, table stakes, which you're introducing now. How do you really see the, the time shift uh, happening from kind of the, the bigger screens to the smaller screen? When we talk of screens in Fios, just so you know, we don't think of just second screen. We think second, third, fourth, and fifth screen. Right? We always think five screens. Mm -hmm.